IPOs are exciting, something new, something disruptive, and some of them deliver unbelievable performances. Unfortunately, some of them become busts, and it's for two main reasons. Number one, they don't deliver on the promises that they made, and number two, they're overpriced. There's a reason why some legendary investors say that IPO stands for it is probably overpriced. Aduro Clean Technologies started trading on NASDAQ last week. The IPO was at 425, giving the company a valuation of approximately $100 million. And Aduro has the ingredients to deliver incredible performance because they have the best technology to solve a major worldwide problem. They're already delivering and they have the possibility of delivering a lot more. And most importantly, they are not overpriced because of the way the IPO happened on NASDAQ. You see, most of the companies that have something special, something disruptive, something that addresses a big problem, the way they go public is they stay in private hands. They are financed by venture capital. And eventually, venture capital hires investment bankers that value the company for the benefit of the existing shareholders, for the benefit of the owners. They're never going to give you a good deal. And then the IPO happens at a very high price, billions of dollars. In case of Aduro, something different happened. Aduro was already trading on a secondary exchange, Canadian Stock Exchange, which has very little liquidity and exposure. And therefore, Aduro was severely underpriced on that secondary exchange. And when it went public on NASDAQ, it had to go public at a price that was very close to what it was trading on that secondary exchange, which was severely underpriced. Do you know why NVIDIA, Microsoft, Apple created millionaires and billionaires? It's because these companies provided a solution to a problem or a need. That's it. So when it comes to Aduro, we have to understand what the problem is, and we have to understand how Aduro provides a solution to that problem. Aduro addresses several problems. It addresses several verticals. But in this video, I'm going to focus on the most sexy one, which is plastic recycling. The problem that the world has is that we are swimming in plastic. We use a lot of pr plastic, one-time used plastic uh, for packaging. Plastic is everywhere. And plastic finds itself in the oceans, in landfills, we ship it to third world countries. And because we consume so much plastic, there is, has been studies done that plastic has been found in our bodies, in our food. There was even an article that it was found in, in males' penises. Plastic is everywhere. It's a big, big problem. And we have been sold a fairy tale that plastic is being recycled because we were told that we should put plastic in plastic recycling bins and then we don't have to worry about this. But this was a big scam by the plastic producers to make us okay with making money from plastic production. But in reality, very little plastic is being recycled. And now, the governments around the world are going to be forcing companies to fix this problem. And some companies are even being sued. Recently, there was a lawsuit where California sued ExxonMobil over plastic pollution. So now, we are at a point that if the plastic producers do not solve the plastic problem, their plastic production business is in jeopardy. 
is in danger. So finally now, they have to listen and fix the problem that they created. How does Aduro fit into this problem solving of plastic recycling? Well, Aduro Clean Technologies has hydrochemolytic technology, which it patented, that is able to take plastic and turn it back into the particles or ingredients that plastic was made from. In other words, plastic circularity. Now, the world, the plastic producers, haven't solved the plastic recycling problem because a technology like this was not available before. They put millions and millions of dollars in competing technologies that do not even come close to solving the problem. And currently, Aduro has six multi-billion dollar companies involved in one way or another testing this technology, and they are stunned with the results. The two most prominent companies that are involved are Shell Oil and Total Energies from Europe. Now, the crazy thing about this is that most of the time, these big companies don't really get involved with small companies unless there is something special there. But also, most of the time, the big companies dictate the terms. So in other words, they will drain resources of the smaller companies to, to test their technology, to see if it works. The small company has to prove it to them. In Aduro's case, these big multi-billion dollar companies are paying Aduro to test their plastic feedstock on Aduro's technology. This is almost unheard of. They are paying Aduro to test it. So, and that's why Aduro has tiny amount of revenues right now. But the big revenues will come when this technology gets adopted and used by these players. Now, Eric Appelman recently joined Aduro after being absolutely shocked with how good technology is. The first time I introduced Aduro to myself and to yeah. others, the first thing is, this is too good to be true. If this technology was working, I'm sure you went through the same thing yourself. Absolutely, yes. So I guess if you went through the same thing and I went through the same thing, what, what was your journey like that made you go from this is too good to be true to, man, this works? Yeah. Well, very simple uh, results. And, and, and for instance, one thing we do with customers is that we let them send a mixture of plastic waste that they care to have processed. Yeah, sometimes we are actually working with a waste company. And they say, well, yeah, we'll put it in the pot. And we watch what is coming out. And then it is too good to be true, as you say. Having the best technology, having the ability to solve a major problem is a big deal. But unless this exercise is profitable, unless you can make money from it, well, then that's not something that's going to make you rich. And another thing that makes Aduro's technology stand out is the fact that this exercise, their technology, is profitable. Most of the other technologies need subsidies to operate. But let's talk about the business model visualize how this technology is going to be used and how we can create profitable business. So you have a plastic recycling facility, okay, that can take plastic and turn it into ingredients that plastic was made from. So as an owner of this facility, what do you need? Well, 
you need plastic supply. You need plastic feedstock, right? So you have to get that plastic either from waste management companies, from landfills, or somebody has to give it to you. Whether they give it to you for free, whether they pay for you to take it, or whether you pay for that plastic feedstock, right? Then you take that plastic feedstock, you run it through the Aduros hydrochemolytic technology, and what comes out is a product that you can sell. So if you take plastic and you turn it back into the ingredients that the plastic was made from, then that product can then be sold to somebody else that can use that ingredient to make new plastic, make fuel, or whatever it is. But you need to be able to take the cost of goods sold, whatever you take in, the plastic feedstock, it has to cost you less, plus all the processing, all of it has to be less than what you sell the, the finished product for. Makes sense. Logical, right? So the way Aduro is planning to make money from it is two different avenues. One avenue is they will have their own plastic recycling facilities. They will own them and they will operate them. That is one side of the business. And they are now in the middle of building their first commercial or semi-commercial unit. That's what the money from the IPO was for, to build that unit, to be able to get plastic feedstock, run it through the facility, create a product, and sell that product to others that can make other products from. That's one side of the business. The other side of the business is licensing this technology to others. So others will be building plastic recycling facilities with Aduro's technology, and they will pay Aduro a royalty for using that technology. So this business model is capital light, huge profit margin, huge EBITDA margin, because somebody else pays for the CapEx, uses Aduro's technology, and just sends Aduro a check. This one is more capital intensive, but the company owns its own facility. It doesn't rely on somebody else to make the decision to build it. So you can think of it like a franchise model, right? They are now in discussions with six multi-billion dollar companies for possibly you know, ad adopting this technology, but then at the same time, they're building their own unit, kind of like a restaurant so that they can show others how this restaurant operates. And then once that a restaurant operates and it's profitable and functional, they, it will be easier for them to franchise that business model, okay? But then at the same time, this unit will create revenues and profits for them. And when this unit is completed, whether it's 2025 or 2026, it will generate enough money and profits that Aduro will no longer need to go back to the market and raise money. You will have the possibility to do that, an opportunity to do that, because if sometime in the future, Aduro reaches a higher market cap than what it is today, then what is stopping them from building bigger units in many different locations? Now that I told you all this, what's the upside? Because at the end of the day, you're watching this video because you want to know how am I going to make money, right? And I wanted to make this video 10 minutes long, but it's impossible. But I'm going to talk about the upside and how you're going to make money uh, from three different angles. One angle is this is the graph Aduro showed in investor presentation. And as you can see, they are projecting to make $95 million of revenues and EBITDA of about $80 million, okay? Now, that is mostly based on royalty revenue from one client, one big client, okay? So 
if they reach this kind of level, what is a company worth with 80 million of EBITDA? I would say minimum of $2 billion, okay? What about getting more clients, right? Now, the upside of this technology is mind-boggling. And it's especially mind-boggling when you look at the market cap today, okay? Now, the second approach that I'm, I want to show you the upside is using another company, Pure Psycho Technologies, that has a worse technology, and it addresses only one specific type of plastic. Aduro can address more types of plastic, another verticals, which I didn't discuss, and Pure Cycle already has a market cap of close to $3 billion when you combine $500 million of debt. Their market cap is $2 million, but they have $500 million of debt, so that's two point five. So the value of the entire company approaches $3 billion, and guess what? They have no revenues yet but the market is valuing them at that level because of the possibility of solving part of a big problem, okay? But PureCycle has been trading on NASDAQ for much longer than Aduro. So that just gives you a perspective of where Aduro should be in comparison to that. Another approach is, I believe that at some point, what's gonna happen with Aduro is that Aduro is gonna get acquired by other companies. And so the way I, we need to think about Aduro's upside is what this technology can do for society or other companies. What can this technology do to somebody else that is interested in creating a business with using this technology? And I'm talking about a big player. What can it do? Well, we know that Aduro's technology addresses plastic recycling problem, but it also has uh, other verticals like upgrading bitumen. You need to do some research on this, renewable oils. But the bottom line is that the addressable market for Aduro's technology is, uh, is close to a trillion dollars. So you have to ask yourself a question. How much is this technology worth for somebody else that addresses a trillion dollar problem? Is it worth $100 million what it is today? I don't think so. So is it worth a $1 billion, $2 billion, $10 billion? That is for you to figure out and study. I am just giving you an introduction to a new IPO that has a solution to a major problem that the world is struggling with. They have the best technology to address that and barely anybody knows about it, and it IPO'd at a severely undervalued valuation because Aduro was already trading on a secondary exchange that had no liquidity, no visibility, and therefore undervaluing it, and that's why the IPO happened at such a low valuation. That's an opportunity for you. Now, it's time for you to roll up your sleeves and do some work and do some due diligence and decide if Aduro is an opportunity that you want to become part of your portfolio.